Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team and I'm here for another conversation in support of the Oracle Groundbreakers um, India Yatra, which is taking place um, right now and will run through um, mid next week. It's been going on for three weeks. And uh, so I'm here tonight with Rafael Benavides. Rafael is a cloud native developer advocate at Oracle in Brazil. Rafael, welcome. Welcome to the program. Hello, Jim. How are you? It's really an honor to be here with you and with you all who are watching this recording. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, um, I've, I've seen your name a lot since I've been on this team, um, and I must have seen you. We must have crossed you know, paths at you know, conferences at one point or another, but we haven't actually met. And that's the whole point here because I've specifically, I say this in every interview, I've specifically reached out to speakers on this tour that I've never interviewed before. Now, I have known a couple of people before, but I've never interviewed them. But in your case, I've never even met you. So, um, happy to always make new friends um so exactly by the way it's the same feeling that i have uh to meet to meet new friends and as i said it's an honor meeting you cool thank you so uh to get me started since we never met um i i took some notes on your bio but let's hear from you who are you what do you do all that stuff just a few minutes to, just a few minutes to kick us off Okay, uh, as I said, I'm actual. I'm a, in currently in a position as a cloud native development advocate for Oracle here in Brazil, and what I do is to help companies, developers, and indiv individuals to adopt cloud native technologies. Uh, I'm in a team of I'm in, in a Oracle Linux team, and Oracle Linux team nowadays is a platform for cloud native applications. So I help those uh, corporations, those individuals, those developers to adopt Oracle Linux and use Oracle Linux technologies to, to so they can um, use their um, cloud native applications on Oracle Linux. Okay, cool. I, I um... I didn't actually see that in the bio with the Linux bit. I'm really glad about that because we haven't discussed anything with anything about Linux here yet in these interviews, um, and uh, so that's really cool. Um, okay, so um, but you're also a Java guy, so you're a Linux guy, you're a cloud guy, and you're a Java guy. So this actually brings up another point that I've been bringing up: is developers have a lot of diverse skills these days, don't they? Exactly, especially those who are uh, uh, working in the IT industry for probably more than 15 years yeah. or 20 years in my case. So they, uh, uh, over the years, they accumulate those skills and those skills are never, um, they, they're never lost. They, 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 they still under your pocket for when you need it. Basically, it's what happened to me. Right. Okay. Quick question on your title there, cloud native developer. What's the native bit? Well, the, the point is, uh, of, course, of course, there are several discussions on the internet on what is a cloud native uh, technology or cloud native application, a cloud native environment. So what's the point about cloud native? Well, what I usually do to explain for customers and for people in general on what is a cloud native is the kind of application that uh, when it was conceived, when it was developed, it was, it was from the beginning uh, having the cloud in their minds. Okay. And by the cloud, it's not only the public cloud, but you can think of, about a private cloud running on premises, but anything that's not uh, that can be scaled uh, horizontally, that can run on multiple hosts, on multiple computers, multiple servers. So the application needs to be prepared for that because it will involve remote communication that will involve uh, the possibility of a remote server not be available. So all the cloud native application uh, started having those 
uh, issues or those characteristics in mind. Okay, so it's not a port or a migration. So it's a or a rewrite. It's it's writing from scratch. Exactly, Jim. Okay, you All got right. the point. Cool. Okay, so there is hope for me. Um, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Now, you're doing a talk uh, next week, and I see here it's MicroProfile APIs in Helidon. Um, so let's, uh, let's just uh, flush that out a little bit. What's the talk about? Yeah, well, so let's start first. What is MicroProfile? MicroProfile, for, first of all, it's a specification. So what's the benefit for developers or for uh, organizations to adopt a specification? is that they can choose the vendor. They, are, they, don't, they will not face the lock-in problem. So, for example, if they choose any framework that, uh, that does not follow a specification, they will be tied to, uh, to the organization or community that created that framework. That framework can go away and they can lose the, 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 the lose these corporations that adopted uh, a framework that, that, uh, that didn't come from a specification, they can lose their investment. Mm -hmm. So the point is, MicroProfile is a specification. So there are several companies that are helping to build this specification. And by, the, uh, by uh, being in a specification, many vendors can implement, many vendors can give support, they can choose the best vendor to, uh, to support them. And the Elidon is this, uh, an Elidon project is the implementation for, for, from Oracle to this okay. microprofile specification. So spec and implementation, okay, cool. Exactly. So um, what does Helidon actually do? Well, not only it follows the microprofile specification, but it also has some extensions. Because of course, uh, the microprofile specification is evolving, but at this moment, it doesn't solve at all. I don't believe in a, a silver bullet technology or a silver bullet product. So given that microprofile does not cover all the needs, the uh, Helidon comes with certain extensions. Uh, I will mention two, for example. The microprofile specification does not cover any specification to store data in a, data, in a database. And the Helidon has, brings the JPA specification, so again, we are following, following a specification here, to, so it can extend microprofile. It brings also uh, JTA, which is a Java transaction uh, implementation for um, for Java, so uh, MicroProfile. Oh, sorry, Helidon also uses JTA as an extension, so it can prov give the MicroProfile uh, specification an opportunity to also have um, database connection uh, uh, transactions at all. Okay, cool and. Helidon is open source as well, right? Exactly, it's an open source project. Source project. We are, cool. we are all as Java developers, we can go there and usually I, I do that a lot. So we can not only uh, report issues, request new features, but also we can uh, submit the pull request with those improvements or fixes, which is nice, something really good about the, all the open source way of doing things. Right. Now, I'm not familiar with the details. I haven't spoken with anybody in the Helidon project for quite a while, I guess about half a year or so. Um, but I understand it's a fairly active community. It's a fairly active project at this point. I mean, in terms of its open source nature, in other words, you're taking you know, contributions from the community and there's activity. You know, it's not just code over the wall, but there's an actual community there. Exactly. Uh... For example, uh, uh, we are in July, so in June we had the release of Helidon 2.0. Uh, I saw that. And, yeah. yeah, and it was really nice because now uh, Helidon has the support of the Grau VM. So we, we can see that how the Helidon project 
is moving fast and in a way that uh, it, it's always getting new features and new capabilities. Right. And Graal is also a thriving open source project. Um, Graal gets a lot of attention at Oracle. Yeah, and now they work of, together. Yeah, uh, interesting, interesting. That's really good. Um, okay, cool. You know, it's most of the people I've been talking to um, at this conference have been database people um, talking and um, lots of database people. Um, one, or, I've spoken to one other uh, Java engineer. Um, but it, how did you come across this conference with this particular talk? Um, in, in what sense? Well, I mean, in other words, it, it's, it seems to be it's a different type of talk than the majority of the speakers are talking about, the focusing mostly on Oracle database issues. Uh, I, I see. I got the point. Well, um, first of all, I, I saw that they are also accepting uh, talks related to development, mm -hmm. uh, just like Oracle Code and other uh, related events. So when I saw that, I became, of course, very excited, and I, I started to submit all the uh, talks that I have related to development. Because okay. as, you, as I mentioned earlier, my background is totally focused on development, especially Java development. And I was uh, really happy when I received the notification that my talk was accepted. And there it goes. Next week, I'll talk about my micro profile with Eldon. Cool. Uh, so the reason I ask is because I've noticed with this particular community over the last couple of years, a uh, few years, um, that it's changing. It's becoming more development oriented um, as the technology changes, as the community of of people, as they change, as they grow, as they mature, and as new people you know come in. Um, certainly, as database is the focus, but um, you know, there's it's not just you know, administration issues now. There's more database developers actually coming into the community. Uh, actually, application developers. Um, so just more developers in general is is the trend, you know. Um, and I specifically asked this question to the community members um, in India, and they all confirm it. Every, everyone says it's true. So this type of a, a talk here, and just your presence as a developer, um, you know, Java developer and you know Linux, and is it, it, I'm sure it's going to be most welcome. Oh, nice, thank you. And of course, uh, when when we think about Oracle, some years ago, we tend to think as a database company. It, of course, the Oracle database is the major product of Oracle, but Oracle is not only about database. Uh, we have the history of the WebLogic uh, application server. So Oracle is giving all the attention to developers. And it also comes with the fact that uh, given that the, uh, the application, the, all the applications worldwide are being modernized. Uh, we don't only rely on database logic to implement a cloud native application as an example. We need developers, developers with different skills, developers with a background, with a backend skill, developers with a front-end skill, uh, mobile, and, and so on. That's why the developers are getting so much attraction nowadays. And that's yeah. good that Oracle is providing all those um, support. Yeah, I've noticed the change, especially with the, you know, with the cloud implementations um, and with some of these higher profile open source projects as well like Graal you know um, and Linux Linux you know Oracle Linux um, is gets very very substantial contributions from the Linux community and this is a huge installed base but Oracle's pretty quiet about it you know uh, in terms of promoting that and so because but you know when you talk to the engineers they're heavily embedded in t into the Linux you know kernel community um, it's not just sort of an ancillary you know product you know um, it's core it definitely is core 
So let's talk about the community here for a little bit. Um, you, you're obviously contributing to open source projects. You're involved with cloud and Java as well. Um, how, you know, you seem obviously to come from the community. What's your experiences with, you know, with the community, you know, with the development community? Well, uh, I'm, uh, to give you the context, as you said, I came from the community. So I'm very grateful because it was with the communities that I joined in the past that I was able to learn and achieve experience and share uh, experience from other more graduated developers uh, that work on enterprise projects. And I was able to learn with them. And I saw the power of the community. And you might ask, what kind of power is that? that everyone talks about? Well, uh, first of all, when, when you share, for example, I learned with uh, the community, and then I got in a point that I had uh, my own experience that I could share and uh, provide a feedback to the community and help new developers, help uh, uh, individuals and companies and corporations that are now get, uh, giving a step toward uh, new technology that I was able to work with or get a experience with. And for some kind of mystery, every help that I give to people, somehow in the future, they will help me some, some way or another. It's a kind of mystery. It's a kind of secret sauce, but it helps a lot. So I'm really grateful and I and always that I can, I try to share my uh, knowledge, my experience, promote other developers, encourage them to share. And that's something that I really like to do. It's, it's um, yeah, it is a secret sauce. I mean, it, but it's also, you know, written about in every single religion, and all philosophers talk about this kind of, these concepts too. And it's yeah. um, it's uh, it's kind of a part of human nature. However, not all fields are community based. I mean, software developers form communities, um, you know, to one degree or another. I mean, there's a lot of collaboration. Um, uh, you know, you write some code, and you just don't go stick it in the gate and ship it out the door. There are code reviews. There's all kinds of ways that that software developers collaborate with each other. Um, and, you know, not all fields have that. And I, I've worked in multiple fields, and I've worked in this field, and it's striking to me that the vast majority of people that you talk to express things just like you expressed. And you express it like it's perfectly normal, but it's not normal for you know, for the vast majority of fields out there. <laughs> Which seems to be like a surprise because uh, when you were talking, what came to my mind was uh, no one can write a big software, a uh, uh, large software alone. And one of the things that we learn in a software engineer uh, in, in, in software engineering in general, is that we need to create modules that will communicate with, with each other to build something larger, just like building blocks. So it's part of the nature to build something that will be reused by another software, uh, by another developer. And probably they will give you a feedback that will help your module to become better and more resilient and so on. So it's part of the nature of the software development. So probably all the, those developers, uh, they start in their job thinking about being collaborative so they can build something better and larger and, and more resilient and, and, or more, and more, or more sec secure and so on. So uh, yeah, but uh, it's a shame that's not uh, something common for all areas 
Yeah, it, it's it's um, it's it's striking. Yeah. I because I've not only worked in one place. I sort of you know bounced around over the years, and uh, when I find myself in an environment where collaboration is not the common denominator, it's like how, how do you how do you you know you work alone? I mean, you're on a team, but you all have individuals that do your own thing. Um, and so I, I just, I find it bizarre. That's why I like talking to you guys, you know, because um, people like you are, are doing this work that is, is very, very advanced. Um, and you sort of, sort of give me some confidence that um, this, this ethic will continue, you know, this ethic of collaboration, um, sharing, you know, distributed development. You're in Brazil. You work with engineers all over the world, um, and in in a distributed way, right? So, um, gives me gives me a little bit of confidence. Yeah, pro probably that's something good. When we give a testimonial about what worked for us and what and how is that good for for us as developers, um, probably people from other uh areas they can see and start thinking why don't we just follow the idea of building blocks that will lead to building communities that right. will lead to build uh relationship between people yeah absolutely good advice good advice okay rafael micro profile apis with helidon next wednesday at the og yatra all right right and okay, I'm cool. waiting for everyone to join this event. Cool, cool. Well, I'm glad we got to. I'm glad we got to have a conversation beforehand. So hopefully, this video will help to uh, you know drive some people your way. So Raphael, it's been a great pleasure talking to you, and uh, hopefully in the very near future, maybe next year, <laughs> we'll be able to meet up at a conference, real life, you know, not uh, behind a screen, and uh, say hello. I hope for that as well. Cool. Thank you very much. Good luck with your talk. Thank you, Jim. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.